Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India session as we have uh, seen in the earlier classes that uh, we have we have defined um, uh, the basic principles of separation processes definition of the separation processes and uh, what, what are the membrane based processes the difference between the uh, red governed process and the equilibrium governed process and uh, we also have, sh have seen the categorization of various membrane based processes and what are the typical differences and salient features of each of these processes that we have already seen. Then we have gone through a series of definitions of various terms, those are quite important during the course of this uh, uh, during the um, uh, of, of this course structure. So, we have already known about the basic terms those will be appearing in the modeling. Therefore, now we are well equipped to start with the modeling of the various process and modeling simply means we would like to predict the system performance and what is the system performance? The system performance is in the in terms of throughput of the process that is the permeate flux and the permeate quality that is the uh, what is the solute concentration in the permeate. So, these two are the basic indicators of the system performance because if we if you can me measure or predict the permeate flux quite accurately, that will be help helping us tremendously in design of a scaled up version. We will be conducting experiments in a small scale and then we will be modeling the whole system and compare our uh, you know computed data with the experimental data. If that you know matches quite well, then we will say that our modeling is validated. Once we will be using a validated model for scaling up, then we can get the permeate flux in a scaled up version. Once you get a scaled up version of permeate flux that what is the meter cube per meter square per second or it is called LMH liter per meter square hour of flux. Then if we have some design in our mind that what is the throughput of the process should be let us say 500 liter per day or 1000 liter per day or 10,000 liter per day, then we can divide the product uh, productivity of, of this uh, uh, 5000 liter per day divided by permeate flux that will be giving out the effective filtration area or membrane area. Once we know the membrane area is this much membrane area is required, we can really go for that much of membrane area or we can procure a model which will be confirming that membrane area. So, that will be very, very important in scaling up of the process. Similarly, apart from the throughput for commercial viability, the permeate quality is very, very important because in most of the applications, we have to confirm the quality of the filtrate or permeate to particular norm. For example, if we would like to have a, a to, to build up a plant of uh, chromium removal, which will be basically treatment of effluent from coming out from tannery of a leather industry, it contains toxic chromium and the permissible level of toxic chromium in the uh, in any um, surface water is uh, is around uh, two, uh, 2 ppm uh, per, per, per 2 ppm 2 milligram per liter. So, your uh, concentration of chromium in the filtrate should be less than 2 milligram per liter. So, that whether in your actual system that is really coming out or not that we have to see. If its concentration is around 5 or 10 milligram per liter in the filtrate, then that is not viable that is not that is not right. So, so the permeate the process performance is basically you know indicated by two parameters throughput is the permeate flux and permeate quality or the solute concentration in the permeate. So, if these two are properly done if the, if you can model uh, this is this system quite accurately then we can do away with a number of experiments. So, if, if, we, if we can we can get in fact this data if we conduct experiments over a wide range of operating conditions, but to conduct so many experiments uh, that will be requiring that um, uh, they will be investing the manpower will be investing money manpower resources and energy. So, in order to minimize that we will be conducting very small 
you know, less number of experiments and confirm our model and then we can conduct the virtual experiments in, in, the, in, in terms of the simulation and process modeling. So, there lies the importance of modeling and simulation and therefore, uh, uh, the in order to predict the system performance quite accurately for scaling up of the system of the process. So, first we will be looking into the modeling of an RO system. RO system and it will be basically do the, uh, we will be writing down the transport laws for solute and solvent flow through the membrane. per unit time and per unit area. Okay. And these laws are derived from irreversible thermodynamics Okay. There are couple of assumptions involved. So, let us write down the assumptions involved in the process or in the, in the derivations. First one is flux of ith species is a function of every force existing in the system. Second one is under conditions not far from equilibrium, flux force relationship is linear. So, that means, if I uh, we consider that the flux is proportional to the driving force and that relationship is linear, if we consider not far from equilibrium. So, we can write that n i there is a solute flux is summation of L i j times f j where n i is the molar flux of ith species and f j is jth driving force. And the constant L i j as we have discussed earlier, it will be the proportionally constant and that will be nothing but the phenomenological constant. Okay. So, now we use a notation, 1 stands for solute. and 2 stand for solvent. So, solu solvent flux can be written as minus L 2 1 gradient of mu 1 minus L 2 2 gradient of mu 2 because in our system what is the force it is the gradient of chemical potential. And similarly, we can write solute flux is minus L 1 1 gradient of mu 1 minus L 1 2 
gradient of mu 2. Then we have something called Onsegger's reciprocating principle. Here we say, if flux and forces are properly selected for proper selection, of flux and force L i j will be nothing but L j i. Okay. Then comes the concept of then comes the concept of coupling and what is the definition of coupling? Coupling says that uh, we due to existence of forces present on the on, the, on another species can influence the transport of a particular species. That means, transport of a species can be dependent on force acting on other species. Okay. So, that is called the that is a definition of coupling and we assume again we will be having an assumption here assume that the coupling in, in reverse osmosis in RO the coupling is 0. There is no existence of coupling therefore, L 1 1, L 1 2 and L 2 1 are equal to 0 and we will be having the expression of solvent flux as minus L 2 2 grad of mu 2 and N 1 is equal to minus L 1 1 grad of mu 1. Now, gradient of chemical potential in absence of any electric field it will be fun, it will be, it will be de uh, described as in absence of electric field and temperature difference, because most of the membrane separation process are occurring under isothermal conditions, temperature difference, absence of temperature difference means it is basically isothermal situation, we are dealing with isothermal situation. Okay. So, expression of grad of mu i, mu I is written as delta mu i del p constant t and n plus grad of p plus del mu i del c i okay, constant pressure and temperature gradient of c i. Therefore, we are in a position to write down the solvent flux as. So, solvent flux can be written as N 2 is equal to minus L 2 2 gradient del mu 1 del p T and N grad of del p plus. So, this will be del mu 2. Okay. So, del mu 2 del C 2 m pressure constant pressure temperature gradient of C 2 m. So, what is C 2 m? C 2 m is constant solvent concentration in membrane phase or in the solid phase, membrane phase. Okay. So, uh, under this we, we, so we assume again a steady state and one dimensional transport so let us write down the system geometry and axis this 
this x equal to l 0 and this x equal to l, l is the membrane thickness. So, this is nothing but the membrane thickness. Uh, C 2 m prime is, so is solvent con con concentration of species 2 on the membrane surface in the upstream or the feed side. Feed side and C 2 m double prime is concentration of solute number or solute 2 on the membrane surface in the filtrate or permeate side. Okay. Now, we will be considering a one dimensional and steady state system and therefore, we can expand this equation this in this equation we can write delta p as d p d x and delta c 2 m as d c 2 m d x and then integrate along the uh, with, with the d x. So, we can write it as n 2 is equal to minus l 2 2 del mu 2 del p constant t and n d p d x plus del mu 2 del c 2 m constant p and t gradient of uh, okay, we just write d c 2 m d x. Then we integrate both side over d x and see what you get. So, n 2 d x is equal to minus L 2 2 del mu 2 del C 2 m p constant p and t d C 2 m plus uh, del mu 2 del p comes constant n and t d p and then we integrate across the length of the membrane thickness of the membrane 0 to l. So, d c 2 m will be from c 2 m prime to c 2 m double prime c 2 m double prime and this will be from p upstream p p r upstream to p downstream. So, p 2 to p 1 and p 2 is the pressure in the feed side and p 1 is permeate pressure. Permeate pressure. Okay. So, uh, v 2 bar v, uh, let us define the uh, partial molar volume that will be del mu i del p at constant t and n. So, using this definition of molar volume we can we, uh, we can we can integrate this equation and treat at the steady state n 2 is constant constant at the steady state. So, we can write n 2 times l is equal to minus l 2 2 c 2 m prime to c 2 m double prime del mu 2 del c 2 m constant p and t d c 2 m plus uh, del mu 2 del p we can we can we can substitute as in terms of the molar volume del mu 2 del p n and t d p and this will be from p 2 to p 1. Then we can substitute the definition of partial molar volume by del mu del mu uh, to del p as v 2 bar is equal to and con assume we assume that v 2 bar the partial molar volume is not a function of pressure pressure over the range p 1 to p 2. So, we constant we, we assume that 
V 2 bar solvent uh, uh, partial molar volume of solvent is constant over the partial range uh, over the pressure range P 1 to P 2 that we are considering. So, once we do that then we can in integrate out the definition of from the definition of the molar volume as V 2 bar multiplied by P 2 minus P 1 is equal to C 2 m prime to C 2 m double prime um, del mu 2 del C 2 m at constant pressure and temperature times d C 2 m. Now, this equation is arrived if uh, one uh, assuming the equilibrium osmotic equilibrium. When the osmotic equilibrium is reached n 2 is equal to 0 and in the above expression we can put 0 is equal to minus L 2 to C 2 m prime to C 2 m double prime del mu 2 del C 2 m d C 2 m plus del mu 2 del mu 2 del del p we can we can substitute it uh, from the uh, using the definition of partial molar volume. So, V 2 bar from P 2 to P 1 uh, that will be treated as constant because it will be constant over the pressure range times d p. So, once you do that doing uh, we, we get the we do, do a simplification uh, we can we can get this relationship that V 2 bar this P 1 and P 2 when you to the other side P 2 minus P 1 is equal to C 2 m prime to C 2 m double prime del mu 2 del C 2 m constant pressure and temperature d C 2 m. So, we get this relationship what exactly we have written here assuming the osmotic equilibrium. In fact, this is the one of the this is the expression of del mu 2 del C 2 m P and T d C 2 m at the osmotic equilibrium. So, this is this equation can be treated as a boundary condition of the or the limit of the governing equation of N 2. So, in terms of so therefore, in the governing equation of uh, solvent flux we can substitute this term the uh, integral C 2 m prime to C 2 m double prime del mu to del C 2 m d C 2 m by this expression V 2 into uh, V 2 bar into P 2 minus P 1. So, if we really do that and what you will be getting is that n 2 l is equal to minus l 2 to v 2 bar and uh, what is this? This since this will be at osmotic equilibrium p 2 minus p 1 will be nothing but the delta pi it will be nothing but the osmotic pressure difference. So, since it is we are, we are we are evaluating this term we are evaluating this term at the equilibrium condition the P 2 minus P 1 will be nothing but the osmotic pressure difference across the membrane. So, therefore, we can now write down the equation of uh, governing equation of solvent flux as N 2 L is equal to minus L 2 to V 2 bar times delta pi minus V 2 bar delta d p from p 1 to p 2. So, therefore, this will be minus L 2 to V 2 bar delta pi minus V 2 bar delta p, where delta p is nothing but p 2 minus p 1 or p 2 is the higher pressure, p 2 is the pressure in the fit side, p 1 is the pressure in the filtrate side. So, now we can consume minus sign within the bracket. So, this becomes L 2 to V 2 bar is equal to delta p minus delta pi and N 2 is equal to L 2 to V 2 bar divided by L delta p minus delta pi. Now, L 2 to is a constant V 2 bar is a constant because it is the molar volume of the, sol of the solvent for a particular membrane 
thickness is constant. So, the whole thing will become a constant and these will be nothing but some constant k solvent multiplied by delta p minus delta pi. Now, this is the the governing law of solute tra solvent transport through the porous membrane and the, uh, the unit of N 2 is basically the moles per uh, meter square membrane area per unit time. Now, this can be converted into you know uh, gram per meter square per second if we multiply it into the molecular weight and then if we if we if we invoke the um, term of density this flux can be written in terms of the volumetric flux okay so moles per moles per meter square per unit time can be converted into the uh, grams per meter square per unit time by using a factor of molecular weight and then uh, this can be converted into meter cube per meter square second by using a factor of density. So, therefore, we can really express our volumetric flux as V w is nothing but L p del p minus del pi, where L p is the membrane permeability. So, this gives the transport law of the volumetric flow rate of the solvent through the membrane and this has a direct bearing of the throughput of the process. Since this expression of permeate flux involves the osmotic pressure and the operating pressure and the permeability of the membrane, this, this law is known as the osmotic pressure equation equation or this is also known as the so called Darcy's law through the porous medium. And since for, for the solutes having the lower molecular weight for lower molecular weight solutes like salts like salts osmotic pressure is significant and this is the governing equation of volumetric flow rate through the membrane and this model is no also known as the osmotic pressure model. Okay. So, next so we have modeled the from the irreversible thermodynamics under certain assumptions we have modeled the volumetric flow through volumetric flow rate of the solvent through the uh, porous media. It is basically uh, it is not the flow rate it is basically the flow uh, you know, permeate flux and the that is that will be through the osmotic pressure model. Next what we will be doing we will be calculating the similar type we will be doing the similar type of you know exercise in order to quantify the solute flux through the porous membrane. Okay. Thank you very much.